I'm Kristen and today we're going to be painting yourself as a cartoon in acrylics on a canvas. Like I did right here. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah? What arm is that? Does it like look like me? A little bit? Maybe? You need to figure out the most important shadows and highlights and only accentuate these. Like obviously I don't have a line right here on my cheek, but in certain lighting that's the only way you're gonna know that there's any shadow is if you indicate the shape. So you're trying to give more of an exaggeration when you do a cartoon and that's I think I achieved what I wanted to here and it's in the most simplified form of painting with acrylics that I could come up with where you have like the skin tone I did a base tone for all of the skin and then I mixed three off of that I mixed two with white so two tints lighter and one darker with just a little bit of blue. If you add black to a skin tone, it's going to turn gray. If you add blue to a skin tone, it's going to gray down, which is, it's not, it doesn't look muddy, it looks more like a shadow, and you can't even really, I did a very minimal job on that, because I knew I'd have the lines to help me out, but there is a little shading in here, and it took me about three or four hours, not including, well, yeah, that's including the drying time, I'd say four hours with the sketch and everything. I'm going to show you how I painted that and you can sit tight or grab a sketchbook. Alright, well let's get to it. So I just started the video with my finished sketch. This video is more about the simple steps to painting an acrylic once you have a finished drawing. So trace your drawing onto some tracing paper. You could use carbon paper to transfer, but I'm fresh out at the moment, so a trick I like to use is to scribble the graphite across the back of the drawing, and that will transfer the drawing to the canvas lightly, and you can erase and fix it if you need to. Which, in this case, I do, because as you'll see, I'm using a light, like a blue pen to transfer, so I can see where I've drawn. I always outline the tracing paper drawing with a micron or a marker of some kind so that when you draw graphite on the back, you can still see it. I fixed my drawing here. I am um, mixing the paint for the background. I wanted to do kind of a purple and this is what I got for this time for a base coat. I do two coats of purple in the background and then I do the shading and you'll see that soon. Here's the purple, it is still wet. Next I do the skin tone. With the base tone, I use over all of the skin. And then I mix two tints lighter and one shade darker than the original. So that gives you a total of four shades. The dark, the base tone, the next lighter tint and the lightest one.
So there's the skin tone, still wet. Creepy face, just the eyes peering out. So here I'm doing a dark green sweater, which I kind of just made up out of the blue because I don't have a dark green sweater. See the corgi on the floor. That's Henry. So first you just take whatever color shirt you're wearing and you put it over the whole thing because it's a cartoon and your shirt is most likely a solid color <laughs> unless you have lots of detail which wasn't the goal of this piece. Next, we're going to paint the hair. I have brown hair. I mixed brown, it, it looks light for the first coat, but I do this coat and then I add on more shading and highlights, which makes it so you cannot see through to the canvas, which is just plain white, because I didn't tone it. So I'm mixing three shades of the purple, in addition to the purple that's straight out of the jar. So I'm adding some that's plain like background color just to get it wet and then I'm lightening on top of that and using what I already laid down to blend. So it's just wet into wet blending. I'm going for an effect where it's darkest right around the outline of my character, well which is you know myself, and then it's lightest at the corners of the edges of the canvas. And don't forget to paint around the outside edges because it always looks much more polished and you can hang it straight on the wall without a frame if you want. If you paint the outside edges of your canvas to match the front, it always looks more professional and polished that way. You don't have to, especially if you're going to put it in a frame, you're kind of wasting paint if you see it that way. But I do because I don't have money to, buy, to frame everything I'm painting. <laughs> And I'm probably not going to sell a painting of myself as a cartoon. It's kind of just a narcissistic thing to have around my house. <laughs> Good practice, though. So there's that blue I'm adding into the skin tone to make the shade. And see, it's not too much darker. Everything looks brighter on camera than it is in real life. See, like, well, it was kind of stark. I started on the nose, because generally when you look at a portrait of anyone, cartoon or otherwise, the nose is the lightest point, because that's where the most light reflects, because it's like a rounder surface. So the nose and the forehead and the apples of the cheek, and then right the brow bone just under the eyebrow, those are gonna be your light areas. And then the center of the chin there's a shadow below the lip and then the center of the chin is quite a bit lighter. So here I'm shading the jaw. And it looks just a little darker but it doesn't look... It's like almost greener as a, a shade and I, if you can see my arms, I have some kind of greenish undertones in my skin anyway. I know it's a cartoon, but it's it's an important thing when you're painting portraits that you get the skin tone to look somewhat like the different for each person. When I mixed the skin, I, I knew it was like way more orange than me, but I was okay with that because it was a really easy color to mix multiple, like if I were to have to make more of it, I have plenty of supplies to make this color. So I'm highlighting my cheekbones and I'm putting a slight shadow just under the eye because I, I don't have big bags but I have, you know, shad everybody has shadow under their eye. It doesn't necessarily mean you're sick or tired, it's just the way your face is shaped. Your cheek sticks out a lot farther so it's going to hit more light and have more light reflect. So 
now I'm shading my hand. You may have noticed in the beginning when I traced, <laughs> when I traced from the tracing paper onto the canvas, my nose, that was not my nose. I was looking at different styles of comics and trying to figure out how you draw a nose without it turning out looking huge. Because anytime you see a comic where the head is facing more down, the nose always looks so big because you don't see the nostril shadow. So I had to put a nostril shadow, but in the picture I had of myself, I really didn't have one. So the nose that I came up with is, it used to turn up more because that's how I, seen, I had seen a lot of cartoons. But when I was just looking at it before I started painting, it was just like, that does not look anything like me with that nose. So I changed it when I just now did the light, the light skin tone over top. And I could see through, that's the thing with the drawing. You can see the drawing through the first layer of acrylic paint, but the second, not so much. So, and I used my picture for reference a couple times, you'll see me pull my my original drawing out to match, especially when I'm doing the face lining and the eyes. So here I'm like shading the sweater and I started putting light on the one shoulder because that shoulder had was turned toward the light and it I'm noticing, you know, now that I finished it, that that shoulder slopes. I have fairly square shoulders and the shoulder just goes to the left. And you're always going to notice things when you're done with your paintings, you're going to think, oh, why did I not see that earlier? So it's awfully dark looking on the computer screen to me. I don't know if your monitors are different, but I have a slightly wrinkled screen, screen, <laughs> a slightly wrinkled sleeve, and it's, it is a dark kind of green. So that is the sweater dry. Here's my palette for my hair, and there's the palette for the sweater. I mixed a shade darker, a shade lighter for the sweater, and for the hair, I only mixed, I mixed one a little more yellow, and then I took some of that and added white to it. So you have the main brown, a slightly more yellow brown, and then a lighter tone. So now I'm painting the hair, and I had my ponytail in like a half, like I folded it over, you know, where it's like a bouncy half folded in ponytail. I don't really know what that's called. It's not a bun. It's just like a loose double thing. I don't know. I'm not the beauty guru. I'm the painting guru. So my hair was half folded over in a ponytail. That's what that is. I don't have short hair. Oh well. It's a cartoon. I'm not putting that much detail into every strand of hair. I'm just putting enough for that you can tell that it's, you know, I have those flyaways on my forehead and my eyebrows are not exactly perfect lines. I did make them a little bit varied, and I did outline my eyebrows, you'll see later. So that was the creep phase. <laughs> creep phase is before you do the line work, where the eyes are just white and creepy looking. <laughs> and my mouth, oh, when I was doing my mouth, I kept looking at it like, this is creepy, it's just this really, scary smiling person with no eye makeup on and just it doesn't even look like it doesn't make you look masculine to not have the eyeliner it just looks like your eyes are open really really wide and it's just staring at you with these giant irises So I like to do, now it already has the base brown coat and I like to get some of it wet with a medium tone and then you put the light tone on top and you just kind of keep working with the paint that's already there between the two colors. See I put a bunch of the paint down and then while it's still wet you can work it in back and forth between the light and the medium and the dark is a good shade so that it all kind of you only put the light where the light would touch on the hair, where it's most reflective. Which I guess if you don't if you don't know, you're not sure and you're making it up, look at some comics for reference. Because a lot of times the artists do use reference like models, but they'll rearrange the lighting on their characters because they'll have one model 
from a picture where the lighting's coming from the left and then another model with a picture where the light is coming from the right. And if you practice enough, eventually you'll see when you have all the light coming from, like in my picture, it's from like more upper left, I would say. That way, if you have multiple pictures that you're using for reference, you can change the lighting as you paint, as you design it, so that it looks like they're all in the same room with the same light cast on them. Oh, the lining of the eyes. Oh, it's my favorite part. It's like Christmas when you unwrap something and you're suddenly like, oh, this is just what I wanted. <laughs> That's what happens when I was like, oh no, this is a creepy, creepy thing with the big old eyeballs and it doesn't look like me at all. And then I did the eyes, I'm like, oh, okay. And as soon as I got the smile line, the, like from the corner of the nose to the corner of the mouth, that line in there, I thought it would make me look like an old lady because if you accentuate that too much, you look, it looks like a wrinkle. But when I got that in there, I was just like, oh, it finally looks like I'm smiling and I don't just have like a really, really angular mouth corner. <laughs> and then I decided I wanted an earring. I just completely made up the earring. I put in the same color as my sweater and I put in a little bit of black underneath and a little white dot on top and suddenly it was an earring. And it's finished! This is my painting! <laughs> that is how I painted myself as a cartoon in acrylic on canvas. Hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. I have some prints for sale in my Etsy store of other paintings, because I didn't print this one. Um, the link is in the description below, as well as the link to like my Facebook page. See you next time!